Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, exciting session uh, at the Exchange 2020 Digital Edition. Um, uh, it's going to be a fun-filled and interesting uh, 30 minutes and uh, I'm going to quickly introduce myself. Uh, I am Shipra Venkatesh. Uh, I'm a freelance technical producer and uh, what I essentially do is I build a stage from, uh, from start to end. So uh, from conceptualizing and uh, jamming on uh, ideas with designers to actually producing it on ground to um, even running the show or managing a stage. Um, it's pretty much the whole spectrum. And uh, I've worked on a bunch of uh, different uh, festivals like uh, Sunburn, Supersonic, uh, Transplash, Far Out. Um, and it's been uh, eight very long and uh, very fulfilling years. Uh, in this industry and uh, I'm really happy to be here to share some of my uh, thoughts with you with uh, Casey and Imran. Casey? Hi, hi everyone. Hope everybody's home safe uh, during this COVID-19 time. Um, wishing every, everybody a very happy stay at home. Uh, be strong. We're going to go through this. Uh, so I'm Casey. I'm a visual artist. Uh, I also run a company called Pixadu. Um, I'm, I'm, we do stage designs, we create concepts, we create content. Um, so basically we do everything under the sun when it comes to content, motion graphics, to AI, augmented reality, to augmented reality, uh, virtual reality, mixed reality, uh, holographic projections, name it. And uh, you know, we do all of those. Uh, I've been a part of a lot of festivals, a lot of festival inceptions in the country from Sunburn, Supersonic, uh, NH7, and to name a lot of other things. So, uh, yeah, it's been, it's, it's been quite a crazy ride. I've seen the industry grow, uh, seen the industry become big. And, uh, yeah, I mean, right now, it's, it's a little downtime. But, yeah, the exciting times will be back again. And uh, off to Imran, who's joining us next. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Casey. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Exchange 2020. Well, my name is Imran Khan. And... Uh, I run a production design and management company called Reset Live. I've been a part of this industry for 20 years now, and I've managed uh, various kinds of production scale events, right from a music festival to concert to award shows, mice events, weddings. Uh, we also have helped uh, managing some IPs for various clients in music and sports space. Uh, we have managed some large num odd number of audience, right from 1,000 people gathering to 100,000 people. Uh, 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 we also uh, are involved in the in, in the creative space in terms of stage designing, getting technology in the stage with designing bits from 3D hologram to video mapping, LED stage design, and so on. Uh, we have been closely working with. Uh, I started my uh, I, I started my career back in 2000, and uh, I've also worked with Sunburn for its first my initial nine years, uh, starting from 2007 to 2015. Uh, we work closely with Backbone for Unite Tomorrow Night Show in in Middle East. Uh, we, we have also worked closely with IDNT uh, for Sensation. Uh, we work very closely with Virat Kohli Foundation and Cornerstone Indian Sports Awards. Uh, we also managed to uh, win Supersonic 2020 this year. Uh, we took a uh, design and produced it for YCOM. Uh, we uh, worked closely with Submerge and Sustain Entertainment for Inkscape Festival. And uh, we had the opportunity to also work with Amit Trivedi and Indra Dhanush. So this is a broader, broader spectrum of things we do. And uh, a lot of uh, uh, EDM artists and live artists we have worked with during this uh, 20 years. So, what to you, Shipra? I guess. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I think that the first thing, maybe uh, to start off this session, um, each of us can uh, can talk about is uh, is what is our mantra? Like, what is what is that one thing that we repeat to ourselves that uh, um, that kind of gets us through uh, all the challenging situations we've been in? So, uh, Casey. I think Imran needs to go on this first. No, Imran, you need to go, need to go on this so. first. <laughs> that would be nice. No, I get a little gap before myself. You already need to go. I think you should go. All right. Okay. So for me, if you want me to talk about my mantra, it's always um, sometimes less is more. That is something that I really go by. Um, even though we come up with a lot of complex designs and complicated stuff, uh, a lot of times, you know, we try to simplify things because we design stages and everything because 
it not just happens in the time of designing or conceptualizing something. We also need to keep in mind that this needs to be produced. This needs to turn out into a physical structure or a physical event or somebody is going to come and be a part of the stage and make the stage come alive. There's going to be a presenter, a talker, there's going to be a dance or a performance. So the feasibility and the convenience to them, um, you know, we just can't keep doing whatever the hell we want to do. So uh, make it very difficult for people to, you know, adapt to things. So uh, sometimes less is more is something that I really go by. So that's one of my biggest Ooh. mantras, you know. Less is more oh, sometimes. I completely, I completely agree with that thought, TC. Uh, well, my mantra, I think, I think the universal mantra is passion. Passion, uh, of course, you need passion to do something because live events will demand to go that extra mile and, and music is, uh, is beautiful. It has so much of power that it takes you that extra mile. So passion is very important, whatever you do. Of course, I've, I'm a big believer in checklists. So checklists are very important. Uh, never trust your brain. Put everything on paper. Put everything in system and processes so you become future-proof. And you ensure that you and yourself and your team is, is developing too. The checklist is, I think, uh, is very important. Uh, what do you, Shipra? Uh, um, I think for me, uh, my like starting out, my uh, mantra was 100% YOLO. Like I used to just get on site and take stuff as it came to me. Um, of course, uh, I took challenges as they came, dealt with them uh, as as they happened. Uh, it worked out, but uh, I think it took a few years uh, and uh, experience to realize that uh, there is definitely a better way. And so now my mantra is plan for the worst. Like um, I am absolutely obsessed with backup and uh, backups to backups and backups to backups to backups and uh, I completely believe that if uh, something has to go wrong it will and uh, and so it's really important to preempt and foresee issues and uh, and be prepared for it um, always so uh, yeah I mean uh, but I think that I'm, I'm, your mantras are also going to be my mantras soon. These are all uh, great yeah. pearls of wisdom. And uh, so now, uh, having said that quickly, I'm going to ask you, uh, Imran, uh, what is the scariest thing that's happened to you on site? Uh, well, uh, as far as safety goes, uh, it was fire, which is the most scariest thing which happened to me. And in two shows, and we overcome the situation because we were well prepared, number one. Uh, and secondly, the, the entire entire this fire incident, not even me, there are so many production heads and managers and, and some really, really awesome guys who have faced fire incidents. And the only reason I see is uh, a lot of time we don't get the venue uh, a, good, a good amount of days to do our setup. And uh, sometimes we agree and we do it and we are well planned and we have managed a lot of show, all of us. Uh, but at times when uh, things are running out of time and uh, there is nobody who will ensure that the, all the guidelines are in place, all the, all the services are in place. There are professional guys to come and support you for that. But the problem is when a production head is firefighting on time, uh, somebody is not implementing. So a safety manager on site, I think, should become a norm. Uh, I mean, client promoters, they all need to support us to get this one person on board who will ensure all the guidelines are met. Uh, so I guess uh, the fire safety manager will be the will be P over here since systems are in place. Uh, what about you, KC? I mean, uh, what is your take on this? Oh, yeah, I have a couple of things which I want, which, which I would like to share. So, firstly, the scariest thing that's ever happened to me was um, um, like one of our shows. It was a live concert, and uh, just about an hour, I think, yeah, about an hour before the show started, there was some mishap that happened with the generators, and uh, the power went off. When the power came back on, they had changed the generators because there was something wrong with the previous one. And the power management was a little messed up. And the power that we that came in into our systems where, where we were in the FOH, um, the neutral and the phase were kind of reversed. And there was return coming in through the neutral or you know, things like that. Earthing was not done pop, proper. So our systems just blew. So I lost all my servers, including my backup. So we burned oh our God. capture cards. We burned our graphic cards. Our motherboards got burned. Like literally there was smoke coming out of all our servers. And that was a really, really big concert. We had close to about some 8,000 square feet of LED. So a lot of tech we lost that night. Close to some, you know, like 16, 17 lakhs worth of tech we lost. Uh, but then, yeah, we, we um, just did whatever we could do on that event. Uh, whatever we could get back online, we got it back. And... Uh, I think we ran the show with just half the LED screens. 
the rest we could we couldn't we couldn't do anything with them that is one incident and the other thing which i would like to say is the scariest thing that has happened or that always keeps happening which is something that keeps scaring us is you know clients coming in the end moment and asking us to change something in the content i mean it's high time you know uh, it's a big request to all the event managers and all the clients irrespective whether they are mine or who's ever for god's sake please give us time don't do the last minute content change because it is not a ppt it is not a ppt where you just go in change some text add some picture built in animation and then you say you know go live it takes a lot of time a lot of effort there's a lot of process so that is something which um, i think that only can happen through education so that's that, these are the things that's really really scare me so there have been a lot of sleepless nights because of content change and all this stuff shipra what do you think wow kc i i am 100% with you on that one i think it's about time that uh, in the industry understands that uh, content is like you don't just it's not as easy to create uh, they need to understand process rendering processes uh, how much time it takes to just like it takes hours the kind of stress that it puts on your servers and things like that um it's it's really not easy to just make changes of uh, uh, in a like in in like a second so um i think one of the scariest uh, incidents that uh, i have uh, faced um, this happened uh, on uh, 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 in about 2013 in uh, on a gig that we had done with avici he was on his uh, india tour then and uh, wow. and this happened avici um, uh, rip um um so uh, he, uh, he this was in delhi and uh, we were we were flying a massive led screen uh, maybe about 2 and a half tons uh, of weight and it was flying and uh, uh, there was a bit of uh, uh, miscalculation in weights and uneven weight distribution and the truss that was uh, that was carrying it it actually crumbled um uh, it uh, it folded and uh, yeah uh, uh, at that point i mean everyone just like all of our uh, we just froze uh, it was it was so scary because the whole led could have come crashing down and uh, and killed uh, people um the first thing that we did at that point was evacuate the area like uh, there's no uh, like it's always uh, humans over inventory right like you got to just clear the area and uh, and then uh, the uh, led supplier picked a few specialized technicians to rapidly start dismantling the led um this was one e- evening before the show we had to bring the whole uh, rig down de rig everything um re rig uh, rebuild truss and uh, and somehow we managed to do all of it and make the show happen um overnight and uh, and i think that i mean it was a huge challenge uh, the show happened successfully it was safe but uh, i think that uh, what each of us have spoken about um uh, it, uh, and all our incidents it highlights that uh, uh, you know the the um, complete disregard and underestimation that people have uh, today for uh, production planning like uh, it's it's not just about closing suppliers and getting in on site you know getting on site and executing uh, it's very important to uh, like at least like i would say depending on the scale of events uh have allocate at least 2 to 6 weeks uh between closing a supplier and getting on site to actually plan your production out and uh, that can include um uh, creating production schedules um cre- having team meetings like bringing all the parties at a table and really talking about how uh, things are going to happen uh, figure out load and weight distribution uh, figure out uh, proper power management and distribution uh figure out what material is going to be used uh, to carry out these complex rigs and uh, and it's it's only time and planning that can ensure that a, uh, a show is safe as well as the setup of that show is safe and uh, again it's only with proper planning where uh, you can um, also look into your own crew's health um you can you can plan uh, shifts for uh, for members of your crew and uh, and ensure that everyone gets enough breaks and is uh, and is well rested uh, what do you think imran so uh, yeah i mean i totally agree with you in terms of uh, production schedules and uh, and, uh, and and taking care of the crew which is so crucial well what i think is uh, a backbone of a production planning is is is, is, a, is a layout and site plan i mean it's very important that we have the layout and site plans and the requisite done thoroughly 
because this is going to become the base and foundation of all your plans. Uh, layout are usually then broken into different requirements for the for different areas. Uh, risk assessment report is necessary, so we kind of know what are the risks at the venues. Uh, I would like to share a screen. Yeah. So quickly, I'll I'll make you go through the different uh, layout side and how it's important to have the right layout because the layout, uh, yeah, everything depends on the layout. So this is a, a small scale production uh, in terms of production, but not in logistics in scale festival. Uh, but you see the elements will be with is all the same. There is a bar, there is a stage, there are toilets, there are market, there is food. Uh, this is an example of one of the versions of Kupasonic festival where you see different stage allocations and all the other elements coming in. Uh, on this layout, a very important thing is the capacity calculation is also calculated. And these are all done scientifically, scientifically on, 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 on AutoCAD. So you exactly know how much of area you have. And uh, you don't have an incident because we had incident where we have overcrowded the venue and, 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 the, the, and the, there were some adverse effects to it. Uh, so if you see throughout, like on this plan, you see the bar management plan is also made, a coupon counter plan is made, your toilet plans are made, your water uh, dispenser counters are made for hydration. Your ATMs, your emergency uh, exit, how many uh, emergency exit points are then? What are the emergency driveways for the fire brigade to come in? Uh, the first aid plans will be will be relying on this. This is an example of a concert layout where it's quite standard. The stage in the center, the VIP platform in the side, and your bar bars all around. This is a stadium kind of a layout where your logistic kind of increases there because there are multiple entry points. So uh, if you see the uh, the layout is actually the base of everything. Uh, uh, you guys can hear me, yeah? Yeah, yeah uh, we can. So audience, audience capacity. Some you will get a brief like that. What, what, uh, what the promoter and the artist expecting on each stage is with the multi-stage festival. You take an approximation on floating crowd and crew. You come to a total, and that total you have to ensure that you can. You have to plan it backwards accordingly. Uh, also, the venue capacity will also kind of define how many ticket sales you have to reach. Uh, at the max level, which is which is, is very important. Uh, this is the kind of uh, calculation we we give it to the client, uh, dividing the area into different different as aspects, like from box office to entry lanes and stages and so on. And the total square feet is then divided between four square feet, six square feet, depending what area you are on. The front of house is always taken at four square feet. A chill out area will be at eight or nine nine square feet. So this is very important that you do scientific calculation so your event and your venue is safe. So I, I think uh, uh, layout and capacity calculation in detailing is a must to make the event safe. So uh, over to you, Casey. What, what, what is what is your take on this? Like just um, you're talking about layout. So just to add to that, like um, one of the softwares that we've been working on off late, if I have to give a good software name, is Vectorworks, which has become a very international standard. Uh, so we've been designing our stages over it. Um, and then passing it on to the lighting engineer, to the lighting engineer uh, or the lighting designer, who then does his trussing over it, lighting over it. So everything cohesively happens on one software. And the best part about this one is it also, if there is something wrong, if there is a load bearing that has gone wrong, or um, you know, you've put some LED and it's it's uh, more than what the capacity of the trussing is, or the scaffolding, or anything as such the software kind of pops things out. So that is something that was really great. So um, I think you guys should look at Vectorworks. I'm sure you guys know about it. So take a look at it. That is something that we've started using. Um, right. Into my process of work, um, like uh, Imran is talking about layouts and everything. Uh, the way I we work, especially in terms of coming to stage designing and then going into the content and everything, is uh, A.R. Rahman is one artist whom, whom we handle like is, is the biggest it doesn't get bigger for us so uh when we are talking about an arm on concert what we normally do is we first sit down we understand the concept where we are doing the concert where is it going to happen what is the kind of audience and then we sit down and start designing a stage of course uh, the stage is based on leds led being our main uh, canvas so we try and make you know different kinds of design and then we debate over it it goes to the lighting designer. The lighting designer then has his inputs and how he wants to rig it, what he wants to do. While in this process, we also take in account of the band and how the band is going to be layouted, uh, the choreography, what is the dance, what kind of dance we are doing. Uh, are we going to have aerial acts? Are we going to have only, you know, acts on stage or there are going to be 
multiple level stage, multiple platforms where are we doing some platform for the dancers? Do the choreographers want to do something very different for this? You know, what kind of entry are they in, uh, doing an aerial entry and then changing into things? So we consider all these facts and then we come up with a stage design and a whole lighting rig and everything. Post that, we get into content. So content, when we are doing content, what we do, especially for this, I'm just doing this, uh, talking only about the ARM uh, concert that we do. So what we do is we sit down and we go by our track list. So we have a stage, which is our inspiration. Then we know we want to do like out of the world, mind blowing visuals. And then we have the songs. So we go through the track list where I work very closely with the show director who's Nazif from BTOS. So we work very closely and we take each song, conceptualize, come up with a concept and then take that concept and figure out how it is going to look on this particular stage. Is it going to look great? Are we going to have depth? And then all the content, everything is made, you know, keeping the whole perspective of the audience. How is it going to look for them? Uh, is it going to look, you know, very 3D? Uh, are we going to make, make it immersive? Give them an experience. So these are all things that we keep in mind. And then we make the content. Uh, as we are making the content, there's another team in the back end which works in the hardware where we go in with our own servers. So there are team, there is a team which is speaking to the LED vendors where we go through the production uh, production manager. We speak to the LED vendor, what LEDs they can provide, what is happening. Take those specs, we make pixel maps and that pixel map is given to the content team to start producing the content. Uh, they take the pixel map, they work, start programming the complete LEDs, you know. Um, your input maps, your output maps, how you program the LEDs, what sending cards we are using. So that's, they do that homework. The content team makes the content. The content goes through to and fro, quality checks, you know, yes and no's and do all that stuff. Then the content is passed on to them. They do their checks in house. Then we come on ground, do our on ground checks with all our equipment, everything in place. And uh, yeah, we do rehearsals and then go for it. So on ground, when we come to on ground, mm. that's where Shipra gets involved. So Shipra, over to you to tell <laughs> us what goes on ground and your planning of things that goes before getting to on ground. So um, uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Casey. So uh, yeah, well, um, <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, yeah, Imran, why don't you start? Because uh, it's uh, uh, once once you get all the infra ready is when the tech comes in. So why don't you yes. start with uh, with what you go? What your process is yeah. on ground? Great. So yeah, I will I will like to uh, share, share a screen again. Uh, uh, so. So yeah, uh, a bit case study on, on two gigs, uh, because again, it's a large scale and small scale, so I've taken two case studies. Well, uh, we, we design and produce VH1 Supersonic 2020 stage design. This is the main stage design. So right from the briefing, uh, Nikhil was leading on, 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 on the design brief, and it was so awesome working with him as always. So uh, as you know that he's so demanding, so <laughs> we had gone through multiple, multiple design versions in terms of color palette, elements changing, so this is more of an artistic design, but a technical the technology like LED and lights are integrated in it. So the, it took around one month's time to, to get to the final one. So the center one, which you see with the flag, uh, is, is the final one. Uh, so there were fans moving on stage. So there was mechanical stuff. Uh, the, the size of the stage was massive. It, was, it went around 300 feet wide by 100 feet high. And... Uh, uh, so going to the next side, the next process when the design is done is your is your scaling of the scaling of the set, which is very crucial to exactly know what structure is of what dimension. Uh, so we put it on scale from a front perspective, from a top perspective, from a side perspective. One more very, very important thing you, uh, which also Nikhil also put emphasize is to see how far the artist is from the, from the first guy in the audience. And it's very important that it's not too far. So that connect with the audience and the artist is there. Uh, also the visual aspect, we need to ensure that the LED in the center is wide enough so because all the artists' visuals are actually going in, uh, going on this LED. So uh, once you do the scaling bit and all, the next process you get into how you integrate the lights and the visuals and the sound into it. Uh, you also have to take care that the sound rig is not kind of disturbing the set design. So we smartly got the uh, sound rig right in the center of the two pillars. Uh, also the the big fan, if you see in the design, which was not done because of of course wind and safety reason. Also the view of the artist cannot be obstructed by any of the set structure. So because of safety reasons, we kind of avoided that. 
of course uh, also uh, producing such a massive uh, stage safety wind factor need to be considered uh, we insisted on 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 proper scaffolding and not edge frames water balancing shipra worked on this on, on this project with me and uh, we consulted uh, proper engineers who to calculate the weight and get the water uh, balance accordingly so all the wind factors were taken in consideration and once this is ready i hand it over to the producer technical producer and she was she was the technical producer on this job so shipra what do you do with this Next. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, what well, happens? So, so what happens? Um, what happens with me more often than not, uh, Imran? Yeah. Uh, is it rains? It pours. Oh, no. It rains like the world is coming to an end. I mean, yeah. I can't tell you yeah, the number. Is, of, you know, there are there are rumors in the market that the rain god really loves you because I have experienced <laughs> at least three adverse situations with you, and every time you were there. What is that in the ring god? Oh, if if I could uh, if I could tell you, Imran. So I I can't even count the number of incidents I've had where uh, it's uh, it's rained on a setup that I've done uh, or on a show that I've done. Um, uh, it uh, starting from Ed Sheeran, uh, the first time he came to India, Dream Theater, um, Tiesto. Like it's it's always like the gigs I've done have always uh, come with uh, a lot of gigs I've done have always come with high winds and uh, and heavy rain. and uh, and uh, as a as a producer what do you do um, at this point like there are some things that uh, you really need to um, take into consideration as you plan for these adversities uh, one is that you got to keep an eye on the weather report use uh, apps like accuweather uh, windy uh, which uh, which give you very realistic uh, uh, which give you a very real time uh, view of what's going on in terms of the weather uh, if you anticipate rain uh, ensure like try and build make your stage smaller than the truss uh, in both in terms of width and in depth so that even if it pours down there's a little it doesn't at least reach the center of the stage um you can uh, rain proof all your uh, equipment so all your sound amp- your amplifiers uh, dimmers uh, processors led processors all of it uh, you got to work at rain proofing it um tarp like order tons and tons and tons and tons of tarp like i think at dream theater um Vinay was the production manager on that show. Uh, we and I think all the tarp that it was in Bandra was at uh, at the venue uh, because and all of it was used. And uh, uh, and yeah, so um, uh, so that's uh, these are things that uh, you have to plan for. Like if if you have high winds, um, try to bring your uh, set down, bring a rig down. Uh, if you're doing an outdoor show it makes sense to use um a uh, mesh uh, led um uh, so that wind passes through as opposed to like solid uh, led so in fact it would be a great investment right now for led suppliers to start investing in more and more uh, mesh led especially for outdoor gigs and uh, and yeah so uh, it's uh, i think that uh, as a technical producer one of the biggest challenges uh, i have faced is nature is the weather and uh, and we it's we really have to work very hard at uh, uh, securing uh, the stage and uh, our crew um, against it and i'm sure uh, you have a lot of uh, uh, experience in this i've seen your crew travel with uh, with tons of uh, equipment so what do you do to make it weather proof Well, firstly, we carry yeah, we carry quite a lot of equipment, uh, especially when it comes to our um, you know servers and um, you know the accessories. So AV is one department where no matter how much equipment you buy, it's it's just never enough. There's always something that you want. So yeah, rescue is the Pelican cases because we are a mobile unit. We have everything goes into Pelican cases. We've made uh, custom foam cuts inside them. so all of them go inside we travel with pelican cases and every event uh, like the rain god loves you i have an artist whom the rain god loves as well so wherever there's an ar rahman show it has to rain there's no two ways about it, it, it there's at least a drizzle that comes so um we always ensure that you know we are carrying our own tops as like you said or the led guy or the led vendor also carries extra tops with them uh we also informed the technical team saying that you know we would need some extra tops uh space we make sure there is one whole section left to right end to end left in the airport just for us one because of the amount of equipment second we need the space to work so because of all of those things um yeah that's where it is mm-hmm. that's how to, you know we we go completely prepared we have backups just in case something happens and things like those 
Right. So and yeah, then, if I are. can just add uh, one thing to that, Casey, because uh, I've actually seen a lot of international traveling crew uh, use these things, especially for sun protection. Um, I've seen the U2 crew travel with it as well as the Brian Adams crew. Um, they use these things called space blankets. Uh, it's a cheaper version of it. Is, uh, is uh, They're called heat sheets which are basically, uh, you use them a lot in camping to kind of retain heat and keep yourself uh, warm, but they also work in the opposite way. They also reflect heat. So, uh, of course, like, you know, sun exposure is also a great, um, uh, it's, uh, it's a real bummer for, uh, for equipment. So, uh, heat sheets, space blankets are a great way of protecting your equipment uh, against, uh, against the warm weather. So, yeah, that is definitely something that we can start um, investing in. Um, in uh, Thanks for the tip, Shipra. I'm going I'm to no go worries. Yeah, no worries. Um, so I think we are kind of uh, running out of time. So um, shall we just quickly uh, talk about where we're headed? <laughs> what What do we Imran, see? What do we What do you see? think is going to happen post COVID nineteen, or how long is this going to last? I, What's going to happen? What do you foresee? I'm I'm a bit positive guy, so uh, I think uh, there will be a lot of guidelines in place for sure. Uh, I mean, certain uh, things which uh, we think uh, is going to come in place. So I, I see a lot of uh, I see a lot of uh, gui uh, guidelines coming from the health and safety division. I mean, the first approach will be will be uh, once things settle down and there are zones which are very safe to do it. So I guess green so zone will be we have to we have to first approach will be it's like everything is burned into ashes. Now we have to build again, and for building again we have to start with small going with club gigs. Making club first secure. I mean, uh, getting only special invite first to check their medical background, check the medical history before you invite them. Uh, 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 all all equipment, all material, to, uh, they need to be sensed, uh, de de uh, desanitized pre and post the show. Uh, I mean, limited entrance uh, 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 is, is a must, I guess. Organic disinfecting channels have been created by 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 a company in in, in South. And it's, it's it's organic, so a lot of that can be produced and installed in different venues, you know. Uh, so no handbags allowed. I mean, you have to be with minimal minimal stuff. Whatever stuff you get needs to be desanitized, you know. There have to be multiple sanitized points. Uh, uh, then demarcation of the areas uh, to do a little bit of social distancing. Uh, still, things things are better, you know. Uh, disinfecting personal belongings, medical teams at the entrance to check body temperature, masks and gloves. Special, special attention for waste management guidelines. Because if you're using gloves, then you cannot throw it in a normal dustbin. So stuff like that, small, small things you have to get into and ensure that the people who are coming for our gig is safe, no matter what the situation is, whenever it arises. And medical holding areas and communication to the audience and crew and artists to follow the guidelines. There'll be set guidelines for audience, crew and artists to follow. So I see all these guidelines and things coming in play, but I'm positive that once things settle down and... I hope we have uh, rapid testing uh, units also uh, soon enough coming in the market. And also get a vaccine soon so we get rid of this. Uh, what do you think, Shipra? What, what, what do you think? How life will be postponed? Um, well, I think that nothing can replace the immersive experience that uh, an event or a gig offers. And so while um, Casey and I have actually also been talking about this, that uh, of course things are definitely moving on to the virtual world. And that's probably something that uh, will sustain for a while. But I completely believe that uh, we're going to be back on track. Um, it might take some time. We got to wait it out. But uh, it's uh, we could definitely going to be back on track uh, soon enough. Uh, doing gigs, doing what we love. And uh, just one tip to everyone out there who uh, attends festivals, works at festivals or uh, concerts or small scale gigs. Like it doesn't matter. Just the whole range of it. Anyone who attends, works, uh, at them, uh, artists, just everyone, please, please start thinking about ear protection. Start, start wearing earplugs. Um, we're often exposed to very, very loud um, music and it's just over a sustained period of time. And the biggest re uh, request that I have uh, so that you can continue doing this for the rest of your life is really invest in a good pair of earplugs and wear them at any gig you, you go for. Over to you, Casey. As much as I agree with you both, there's nothing that can replace a live experience. I think me being a gamer, I'm going the virtual way full on. <laughs> you know, we are going completely VR. We are going completely AR. And we are going completely mixed reality. So uh, I don't know whether that's going to become the next norm post-COVID. Uh, post 
but yeah that's definitely where we are going everything is going to be virtual um um even if covid is being uh, say we get rid of it it's going to take some time till people start traveling you know air travel and everything there's, there's a lot of things to it so virtual is going to be there for some time and as far as you know coming from the gaming community as such uh vr experiences right now are like really mind blowing being very honest so i think it's 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 time whenever anybody can you should get a vr gear for yourself and be ready to experience concerts in the vr world till we start you know having live concerts and even post that we could still do concerts on vr you never know so yeah that's okay where, noted that's, that's where i would leave it hey guys, stay home guys uh, stay safe uh sanitize yourself don't panic um yeah and yeah be nice to your neighbors great yeah. chatting with you guys and uh I hope we had a great session. Thank you yeah. very much, everyone. Absolutely, man. Great, Bye, great, everyone. Great, great.